everyone. Today we are talking about operations with fractions and proportions, and very important thing, converting units. So to start off, we have the meaning of a fraction. Is a fraction can be used to describe a part of a whole. And then the next one is division by zero is the fraction a over b is undefined. B equals zero, and division by zero is undefined. That means is if you have example a over zero, and since b is equal zero, this is equal to undefined, and that's what I expect you guys to write down as answer. Next one, multiply a number by one. A times one equals a, and you guys learned that from before. A number now it's in word. A number multiplied by one is that same number. See if you want to think about this, that's gonna be three times one. That's equal. To three. Next one, division dividing a number by one. When you look at dividing number by one, is you have a over one equals a. In number sense, if you want the example, it's going to be five over one equals five. And the words are a number divided by one is that non-zero number. Next one, dividing a non-zero number by itself. Non-zero number by itself by itself means the same thing right here. By itself means the same thing. If a is non-zero, then a divided by a is going to equal to one. A non-zero number divided by itself is one. So if you have five over five, that's equal to one. Going on to the next example, multiplying a fraction. When you multiply a fraction, b and d are non-zero. Notice the denominator is not zero. So you can just multiply the top across a times c, a c, b times d, b d. Let me give you an example in numbers. Look like this. If you have two over three times five over seven, two times five is ten, and then three times seven is twenty-one, and that is your answer. To multiply Multiply. The next thing they say is to multiply two fractions. Write the numerator as product. Product we learned before that is multiplication, and write the denominator as product. That means also multiplication. Next one, define prime number or prime. A prime number is counting number. Counting numbers one, two, three, four, five. Greater than one. So that means not including one. Greater, larger than one, not one. Whose only positive factors are the number itself and one. Let me give you some example. Factors is for if you have two. That's just one times two. One is a factor. This is a factor. Two. Is Is a factor, so that's only one. And then the next one is three. One times three. One is a factor again, and three is a factor. If you go on to four in comparison, four the factor is one times four. Look at the definition. If it counts a number larger than one, only positive factor, only positive factor right here is the number itself and one. But four has number itself right here. This is number itself and one, and also. Two times two because they have more than two sets of number that you can multiply. Here's one set. Here's two set. Therefore, this is not a prime number, and so forth. Five is a prime number. Six is not. Seven is. A is not. And prime number, just so you know, is not always a number. Two. That's the only even prime number. What we're going to do is we are going to learn how to write a number that is. A product. Product means multiplication of all the prime number. So that's gonna be like two and three and five and seven. So the way you do it is, I like to divide. And because this is a positive number, and if I don't have a calculator, I'm gonna try to do it by the easiest way. And the easiest way to do this is, I'm going to take the fifty-four and draw a L and just divide by two. And if you divide by two, it's like cutting it in half. That's gonna be two and seven. And then since that's two and seven, you know three can go into twenty-seven. Notice two is a prime number, three is a prime number, and that's gonna be nine. And then if you divide by again, the three can go into nine, and you left with nine. Uh, three. Okay. So don't notice they are all prime numbers. So the way to write a number as a product of prime numbers that goes like two times three times three times three. You pretty much just list. All the number on the outside, and then therefore you got all the prime number product. Another way you can write this 
because if you are two, you don't want to do extra work, you can write it as two times three to the third power. Either answer will be totally okay. And I would like you guys pause your video and try 72 and 48. Don't forget divide by two. This is like a factor tree. Always use prime number. If you get an even number, always divide by two. So that's 72 because it's an even number. I'm gonna start by divide by two. And if you divide by two, two goes in seven, three times, and you're left with one, six is 12. And you divide by two again, that's 18. You divide by two, that's nine. You divide by nine, is not even. So I'm gonna start using other number, and some of you guys recognize that's three. And the prime number is just two times two times two times three times three. Or you can say two to the third power, times three to the second power either way it is totally okay pause the video try the next example which is 48 look at the uh, example for number um the example for 48 so i take 48 and i divide by 2 and i give me 24 because it's even number i divide by 2 again give me 12 divide by 2 give me 6 divide by 2 give me 3 so therefore there's my little breakdown and i write them out all the number on the side and then 2 to the fourth power 3 because 1 2 3 4 and there's 3 product of prime numbers the next thing we're going to talk about is a simplify a fraction just reduce now the proper the proper wording of it should be right fraction as an equal fraction. We're going to reduce it as an equal fraction, which the numerator and denominator do not have any common factors other than one. And what does that mean? Let me write it out the long way for you first so you understand what I'm talking about. So if you go down and write this example, 4 over 6, you are going to just uh, bear with me. 4, if you break it down into prime numbers, that's just 2 times 2. Okay? If you break it down into only just prime number, if you just do this, that's going to be 2 times 3. And what they are saying is they cannot have any factors right here that is in common on the top, on the top, bottom. In the numerator and the denominator what you have to do is you have to cross it out and that's really what reduce fraction about you reduce the factor that's the top and bottom the same and so me for me it's kind of like the one-to-one -one coverage in sports like soccer oh you make sure you cover your opposite or football is one-to-one -one coverage basketball is the same thing so, you know, all those kind of things that has like the one to one, I'm taking another person out. So then once that's done, your answer when you covered it is two over three. And that is your answer. That is what simplifying a fraction means. You cannot have factors. Every single this little guy is called the factor. And you cannot have any factors in common top and bottom, top and bottom. All right. Going on to exa next example, please try 30 over 42 and try the, the other one, 84 over 14. Just want to quick show you the work. Um, some of you guys can redo this, reduce this very fast. And sometimes you can just look at it, oh, divide by two. And then I would just write down 15. Um, so another process I would do is just cancel it right on top and bottom. So I would say, oh, cancel by two. I have 15 over 21 and I notice they both have three in common and I will have five on top and seven on the bottom So there's a few different ways if you want to do it and it's up to you see whatever make more sense um, But for me, I broke down into the primary the prime numbers right here on top and prime number on the bottom and write them down and notice the the same factors that I cancel out and whatever is left over, I just write down the answer. If you have more than one set of number, which is like no, no problem, like two times three on top, I would just multiply and that give me six. So in this case, I just break down the 84 right here, two divided by two divided by two, a uh, three and seven. And that's why I wrote on top and cancel out the two, I cancel out the seven. And that's where I got my six. So that is um, simplifying fraction. So next section that we have here, more than one fraction. And they, the rules still 
apply and then if you want to multiply them uh, if you want to multiply them together and then reduce be my guess but i don't like to do that because why should i make it bigger bigger number is harder to work with so what i would do is i would just say oh eight can cancel out with four one on top one on the bottom eight is a factor of two times four four cancel out that just left me with two and this left me with one because both cancel out four and then also another way one on top one on bottom remember one to one coverage so this one is going to be i can cancel a three on top that left me with a five and then i cancel a three on the bottom that gives me a three and that's going to be 10 over three and that would be your answer or if you want to write it out i'll be happy to write it out for you and that's going to be a is two times two times two if you break it down a two four two two that's where my three two come from and 15 is going to be three times five that's 15 so this is a this is 15 then on the bottom i'm also going to multiply um factor out so that's gonna be three times three and this is going to be two times two now we are going to cancel any factor that's the same top and bottom so here's the canceling part and it's gonna be two here and two here another two pair two one to one coverage one on top three one on bottom three so in this case whatever is left on top is just going to be 10 whatever is left over is 3 and then the answer should be exactly the same compared to the answer you have above and either way is totally okay with me just show me some sort of work so please practice the next example so for the for the example the answer is negative 2 over 5 um i try to reduce it just right on top of each other it gets really messy so i just write out all the factor 3 times 5 is 15 2 times 2 times 2 2 is 8, 2 times 3 is 6, 5 times 2 times 5 is 50. And when I reduce them all, the answer is negative 2 over 5. And reciprocal, just flipping the top and the bottom. Reciprocal of A over B is just B over A. And the reciprocal of um 3 over A is just A over 3. Just evaluating the expressions. Make sure you plug in the numbers and work out the problem. Pause the video and try your uh, problem and then come check back with the answer for the next example you have a over b multiply uh, divide by c i plug in the number divide by three a is 21 b is 2 c is 3 then i hope you guys remember when you have a division sign you multiply and the reciprocal means flip that's why what we talk about before is reciprocal a over b become b over a so since this is a three over one that is becoming one over three and when you reduce the three and the 21 that gives you seven on top one on the bottom and nothing else can be reduced so any more factors so it's just seven divided by two seven over two that's your answer for the first example second example is going to be plugging everything order of operation 2 to the third power gets done that's 8 2 times 2 times 2 mm, okay be careful some people would think this is a different number then 6 times 8 is 48 and then negative 1 on the bottom because 7 minus 8 but notice i did not put down the 1 i just skipped the step so you need to just and then just box the answer and that's good enough for me for me and um for me right and uh that is the next two examples next thing we're going to talk about is uh, addition subtraction of fraction same denominator and that's really easy when you have the same denominator hopefully you remember if you don't here's a quick reminder the denominator stay the same and you just combine the top but don't forget you also still have to reduce so when you plus 4 plus 6 is going to be 10 over 15 denominator stay the same it does not change so please make sure they are the same and then don't forget to reduce them because they both have five as a factor so therefore the answer become two over three because i can solve by five and that will be your answer for this problem and please try the next problem because that's just the same thing with the subtraction the denominator is the same we are just carrying over for 15 13 minus 8 is 5 because they both have 5 as a, a factor 1 divided by 3 that will be your answer the next topic is addition subtraction of fraction with a different denominator and this is where a lot of you guys get confused confused please don't think it's that difficult we are pretty much just wanted to make every single pizza with the same size of slice and that is it it really is that much um so in this case if you want to we want to make a same 
size. Well, think about this pizza right here. It's only cut into three pieces. This one is cut into five pieces. Well, that's not fair. It depends on who is taking what pizza. So how can we make sure everything come to the same size? So we compare, we compare. Oh, so the number really the method to get to the same pieces is because they are not the same. We are going to make sure this guy times the same thing if I cut it into five and five. Well, because the common denominator in this case is 15 because they have no common. This one has the first one has multiplied by a five. The second one has multiplied by a three. Now, I don't like it to see the X right there or sometimes the multiplication sign. So I like to use a parenthesis. So you can say I multiply by five on the bottom. I multiply by five on the top. And the reason I like to write that down is if you eventually get to harder math, you have other things that can be multiplied. And the next one is going to be multiplied by three, multiplied by three. So now you don't miss it. I multiply top and bottom by the same thing. And that's the important rule of equivalent fractions. And once you do that, I'm going to read, I'm just going to multiply it out. So that's 10 over 15 plus 12 over 15. And that's going to be 22 over 15. And since they have no common factors, my answer will be done. And that's 22 over 15. Please pause the video and try the next example. So the next one right here is the same thing. 7 and 2. Well, their common denominator is 14. And this one, 7, need to multiply by 2 to get to 14. So top and bottom. This one is 2 missing a 7. I'm gonna do top and bottom by 7. So in this case, I'm cutting the bottom into 14 slices. And then this one gets changed by taking 10 pieces. This one gets changed by taking seven pieces. And so then now we have the same kind of size. So 10 minus seven is gonna be three over 14. And that is the next topic review we reviewed. On to the next topic, proportion of the rest. When you're talking about proportion, again, that's a fraction. So we are dealing with fractions. The fractions saying, proportion of the rest. A student complete the 7 over 15 of math assignment. What proportion of assignment is not complete? Now read the question very carefully. You have completed this much, 7 over 15. Not complete, which is just the other part. So what you're going to do is you are going to assume every single thing that you have is one. One whole. Con all your problems is just one. And then since it's 7 over 15, 7 over 15 is going to be the problem 1 minus 7 over 15. And that is it. Okay. And once you do that, remember when you subtract, you can make 1 into any number top and bottom as long as it's the same. That's called the equivalent fraction. So in this case, that's going to be finding the common denominator is going to be 15. And so I'm going to write 1 as 15 over 15 and minus 7 over 15. And that's going to be 8 over 15 and that is all you have to do and that would be 7 over 15 of the math assignment is not completed 8 over 15 the homework assignment is not completed at the city college of new york in fall of 2013 a proportion of students who were african-american were approximately one-fifth the proportion of um city college of new york who were asian pacific islander was approximately one over four find the proportion that's not that um find the proportion of the college students who have other ethnic city. So what you have to do is pretty much one is again the whole population. And we're gonna take away the African American and the Asian Pacific um Asian Pacific Islander. So that's gonna be one minus one fifth and minus one fourth. And then to do that is you also again have to find the common denominator for three different fractions. So pause the video, try it. And again, just so you know, the denominator is going to be 20. Check back when you're done. For the example number two, notice that I changed this into denominator all 20. And then notice I write the one as one over one. And then that gives me a bottom, which is new denominator. And I make it top and bottom both have the same um, number because the common denominator is 20 so 20 minus 4 minus 5 is going to give me 11 and the question should be answered in sentence 11 over 20 of a city new um city college of new york students 
had other ethnicity. That's example number two. For example number three, now we're gonna use some real life situation. So using a table to find proportion, undergraduate undergraduate envir um, enrollments at the Vanderbilt University in 2013 are shown in table 11 for various schools within the university. So table 11 enrollment in school at Vanderbilt University. Those are the different colleges and those are our different students. All right. So now what they have said here is find the approximate proportion round to the third decimal of the Vanderbilt undergrad students who were enrolled in College of Arts and Science. So in this case, remember proportion is part of the whole. Now find the whole. What is the whole school population? Well, the whole school population is 8,673. And we are looking at the College Arts and Science. All right. Arts and Science is right here. The first one. So 40 97. And the next thing they say, they want you to round the third place. It's very important that you understand where they want you to round. If you don't round it correctly, you might chop off a huge population. So please make sure. So if you run it to the third decimal place, you need to use the fourth place around so i'm gonna pause the video go ahead pause the video and answer the rest of the questions and let's check can you get the same answer as i do so part two in this one is not enrolled in college of art and science so in this case the ones before is the ones that's enrolled in art and science so the other one that's not is going to be the whole thing minus the ones that enroll so it's going to be rest of them is going to be not so 4476 were the people that's not in the arts and science. So therefore, over the whole thing, I get 0 0.5160 and to round of three decimal places is going to be 5.16. Same, same thing with part three, enrolled in Blair School of Music or Peabody College. So the is either in Blair or Peabody. So Blair is 193 and Peabody is going to be 1780. Since it's all of them together, that when you add them together, it's 1973 over the total. And that is going to be the people that's enrolled. And that's about 22.2274. Uh, and round the three decimal places, you are going to use the four to round up to the seven. And since it is less than five, it will be dropped. So the approximation is 0.227. Now on to letter B. It says if the exact proportion for seven schools in table 11 were total, what would the result be? What's well, going to be the whole thing 8673 over the total 8673 and therefore it's going to be 1. And because it's 1, that's going to be the total of the total. So it's a whole over the whole. So there's going to be everybody. So that's one. Converting units. When you convert units is if you have something, for example, make indication you indicate a unit conversion. And in this case, round the results to two decimal place. Okay. That's two decimal places, two places at the decimal. So you're going to use the third place to round. The official height of a basketball hoops is 10 feet. What is the height in yards? So I, I gave you the um, conversion right here. And so what you're going to do is you are going to do something that Miss Bray or some of you guys have learned from different other different teachers that we're going to do. Um, if you have a conversion unit making indicated unit conversion, Round the results to two decimal place. The official height of basketball hoops is 10 feet. What is the height in yards? And I hope you guys, that this is called the unit conversion. So in this case, we're going to write down 10 feet. And I hope you guys remember you do a conversion. You put the same unit things on the bottom so you can cancel the 10 feet. So feet and feet has to be right, one on top, one on the bottom, so you can cancel out the unit. So this is called the unit conversion, just so you guys remember so you put the three feet here you put the one yard because that is what you can cancel so the feet and the feet cancel out and if you multiply this is kind of like over one and multiply together 10 times 1 is going to be the units 10 yard and over 1 times 3 that's just 3 so Put it in decimal, it's going to be 10 divided by 3, and that's going to be 
three repeating yards. Now, since they gonna give you, since they want you to round it to two decimal places, so it's gonna really be three point three three two decimal places, the third decimal places. So you're going to round it to two decimal places. That's gonna be approximately three point three three yards. That will be your answer for the first conversion problem. And box it. And then that's your answer. Now don't forget again, I give you the conversion. You need to make sure that you understand what you are converting. Now, in this case, read here, a electric um 1974 Fender Jazz Bass is 46.25 inches long. What is the length in centimeters? And I told you guys that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So what you're going to do is you are going to do 4625 because that's the conversion you're going to do. And that's an inch. So therefore, multiply the inches that have to go on the bottom. So that's going to be looking at your conversion right here. Which one's the inch? Well, it's going to be one inch and it's going to be 2.54 centimeters. So when you cancel them, you'll have the inches and inches cancel out. And it's just a 46.25 times 2.54. And that's going to give you approximation of 117.475. And since we want it in two decimal places, like the problem before, you are going to run it to 117.48 because that's rounding up and that's going to give you centimeter. And that is your approximation for the whole thing. So for example number three, please pause. You guys try it and I'll come back and check your answer. To explain this problem, just because this problem is a little bit complicated, it has more than one conversion. So what happened here is you have miles per hour. So when you have a, that per, that become a division sign. So become four miles per hour. You have one mile equals 50 to 80 feet. You have one hour equals 60 minutes. You have one minute equals 60 seconds. So 50 to 80 feet equals one mile, mile and mile cancel out. And then you have one hour, one hour, hour cancel out. That gives you 60 minutes. One minute and 60 minutes, minutes, minutes cancel out. So there's 60 seconds. So those are your conversion right on here. And then once we start canceling them, you have the miles cancel out with the miles. The fee cancel out with the, they don't want the fee cancel out, sorry. And uh, so, so the fee doesn't get canceled. You have the hour cancel out with the hour. You have the minutes cancel out the minutes. So now I left with the units of miles. Um, feet per second. So what we're going to do is we are going to multiply across. That's a four times fifty to eighty times. That's going to be two one one a zero. Three. That's two one one two zero. Two one one two zero over sixty times sixty is thirty six hundred. And let's put the units on there. That's feet per second. That's exactly what. Um, the problem ask. So now let's change it into decimal. That's going to be 5.866 repeating. So now if you round it, you are using the third decimal place to round. So it's going to be 5.87 five mile of V per and that would be your answer. So that is the more complicated problem. And that concludes the notes for 1.3. Thank you so much for watching.